went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. And other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. A sower went out to the sow, and he strapped a bag of seeds over his shoulder, and he headed to the small strip of land, and he would know nothing of the type of land, the type of fields that we have around here in our area. The sower's land was on a hillside, terraced with rock walls, lined with paths, public paths that many people traveled to other strips of land. But the sower began this familiar practice of casting the seed out of the bag onto the ground, and he was not careful at all with the, with the seed. He threw it out extravagantly. At this point, he's just trying to get the seed out of the bag and onto the ground. So some of the seed inevitably falls on the hard dirt path, and the seeds won't even germinate before the birds get to it. Some of the other seeds uh, fell by the rock walls. There's really not enough dirt there for young plants to grow good roots, and the sower knows that those seeds will probably just get scorched by the sun. And some of the seed starts out okay, but a weed comes up and grows beside the, the seed and, and it chokes out the plant. And then there are other seeds that would fall on good ground. And they bring forth a large harvest, Jesus says. Some 30, some 60, some 100. That's the story. So where do you find yourself in this story? In this parable that Jesus tells? We are in this series of working on and caring for and keeping our soul. So maybe the question should be, where do you find your soul in this story that that Jesus tells. Maybe your soul is like the sower today, trying to figure out why your life is sometimes successful and why sometimes it isn't successful. Maybe it is your soul that is the seed trying to figure out if your life has fallen on soil that is never going to allow you to grow, maybe your soul relates best to being a pathway walked over by so many people. Or maybe your soul is like a rocky wall that is too defended for any goodness to come into it. Is your soul nurturing a weed that's now choking out the seed of hope in your soul? And what would it take for your life or your soul to become good soil once again? Well, there's about 12 sermons in there. Which one do you
do you want this morning? I could, could give you a sermon on, on each of those things. But actually, I think what would be important for us as we consider our souls, and by the way, we still have more books keeping your soul available for you. People that have started reading this book, I've heard over and over again, uh, they are encouraged by this book. They are enjoying this book. So if you haven't picked up your book, please do so today. We've only read the first five chapters, so you can easily catch up with uh, the rest of us. Keeping your soul. What do these words of Jesus have to say to our souls? I want to focus on the last verse that Jesus says, and you can turn to it, and maybe we can just say it together. The very last verse of that scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, verse 9. Jesus says, let anyone with ears listen. Let's say that together. Let anyone with ears listen. Let anyone with ears listen. Do you have some ears? Jesus says, listen. Jesus told his parable to a very large crowd by the sea man, he tells us, and the crowd was so large that Jesus had to get into a boat just to be seen by them all. And I think it's a nice visual image for us. Jesus alone in the boat, speaking to the crowd who literally is not in the boat. To people who literally is not on board with what Jesus is saying. So the question is, is your soul on board with Jesus today? This crowd that included the Pharisees and, and Jesus' close family, and even his new family that he calls into being, they were all there by the shores of the sea. They were listening to this parable, but as Jesus makes clear, he expects his new family to be able to do one thing, and that is simply to listen to him. To listen to the story, to listen to these words. So is your soul at a place where your soul can actually listen to Jesus? Or, or is your soul too busy? Is your soul suffering too much to be able to listen? Is your soul hardened so that it cannot or will not Listen to this Jesus. The ability to listen is the mark of being a member of Jesus' family. Jesus makes this very clear. The ability to listen is a mark of being part of this new family that Jesus is calling into being. And for some of us, that's kind of unfortunate. Because some of us are very poor at listening. We're much better at speaking. Maybe preachers can be better at speaking than they are listening. But many of us are better at speaking than we are at listening. Many of us are better at doing something. Many of us are better at making something happen, happen, taking responsibility. That's, that's what we want to do. To listen means that we have to take the story in and allow the seed of its truth to grow within us. To listen means that maybe we just can't do anything for a while. We just need to sit and be quieted and listen to this voice of Jesus come to us. So what did you say, Jesus? What did you say, Jesus, and, and what are you saying to me? What are you saying to my soul today? Well, Jesus tells us that the sower is not careful with the seeds. Jesus is not careful with the seeds of the kingdom. Listen to Jesus. The sower just flings it. The seeds are flung, and, and the sower just 
lets the seeds lie where they lie. And there's no controlling the sower. He plants the way he wants to, and, and then we just wait to see what happens. Listen to Jesus. If we're not good at listening, we certainly aren't any better at waiting. Wait and see what happens. We often are impatient in life, aren't we? We want things to happen right now. But Jesus seems to be telling us that we're not the ones that are making things happen. We certainly don't make the gospel happen in our lives or in the lives of other people. We don't grow the seed. We don't even take care to ensure that it will fall on good soil. And we certainly don't control the sun and the rain that the seed will need. We don't do all of that work. So listen. All of the important jobs in this parable are out of our hands. They are out of our control. We just have to wait and see what God does. And as anyone with ears to hear knows, that's really how the story of our lives go as well. How many times have you heard someone say, well, you just have to wait and see. I'm not sure what will happen, you just got to wait and see. A friend, a family member, they have a frightening medical test, and you ask them, well, well how did it go? I don't know, we haven't got the test results back yet. We, we have to wait. We have to see. A spouse who has been out of work for a long time comes home from a job interview, and the spouse asks, him as he is greeted at the door, well, how did things go? And he sighs and responds, well, I, I don't know, we we'll just have to wait. Just have to wait and see. You work so hard as a parent caring for your child to see what happens with them, but you have to wait and see. Or, if you are an adult child, and you're caring for your parents, sometimes you just have to wait and see what happens. Wait and see what happens with your aging parents. Wait and see what happens with your children. Wait and see what happens with your health. Wait and see. How many of you like waiting? But listen to Jesus. Wait and see. Trust the sower. The future belongs to God. The future is not in our hands. It is in God's hands. And isn't that wonderful news? Because who better would you, or could you, entrust the future to? This sower. As everyone in the family knows, our hope is in a Savior who flings grace so extravagantly. Just wait. You'll see. Just wait, you'll see. And even through you, Jesus is casting Jesus' seed. Don't think that there's something wrong with you if everything you do doesn't produce a stunning harvest right away. Listen, don't be surprised if your work doesn't produce something that you can see immediately. Don't be surprised, Jesus is telling us. And Jesus is also telling us, certainly don't be discouraged in this. Don't be discouraged if you don't see the results of all the care that you give to your family or all the care that you give to your aging parents or your loved ones. Don't be discouraged in all of this. Everything you try, every word you speak. Every act of service. 
that you offer to someone, every offering you make to someone who is in need, will not result always in the harvest that you had hoped. Only one out of the four seeds produced anything worthwhile. That's not very good odds, is it? One out of four. If a person stepped up to the free throw line and made one out of four free throws at this time of year, that's, that's not very good, and we'd be pretty discouraged. Only one out of four of the seeds produce. And Jesus is saying, don't be discouraged in that. Don't lose your hope in that. Jesus says to us that there's still power in the seed. Don't forget the power in the seed. Don't forget that there's power in your love. Don't forget that there's power in your serving. Don't forget that there's power in your speaking the truth. Don't forget that there's power in your acts of healing. Don't forget that there's power in this good news of God. You might not always see it, but there certainly is power in it. More power than you can ever imagine. So just trust the power of the seed. And trust this sower, the sower of the seed that's working through your life. Sometimes that one seed will produce a hundred times what you thought would be produced. Because of God, because of the Word, because of that moment, because you chose to offer some help to someone else, because of that serving moment, that prayer, that effort to love, it produced a hundredfold. Sometimes that one seed produced sixty times what you expected to see. Sometimes that one seed, that act of love, that act of serving, that act of truth-telling, that act of mercy, that invitation that you extended to somebody who was lonely and who was hurting would lead to result in more than 30 times what you ever thought would happen. There's power in the seed, you see, that's being sown in your life and in the world. Because the future belongs to God, and God is great. Then sings my soul, how great thou art. We don't sing how great we are. We sing how great God is. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. So let your soul sing today as you listen to these 